This is Atma Boda, and that was Bia Miller's Welcome to the Playground as an intro. Today's topic is Welcome to the Ultimate Playground. Ultimate truth is the ultimate power. And if you do not feel powerful, you are not experiencing it. When you tune into this ultimate reality, Life is a playground, and that is amazing to have a sense of inspiration and love to carry you through each and every situation, each and every moment of this wonderful adventure called life. When your heart feels like it is an inferno, a blazing sun of glorious love, and your mind feels blissful and ecstatic in the inspiration, the blissful immersion with the ultimate truth. That is the ultimate reality. And that's something that I want everyone to experience. Enlightenment is for everyone. And that's the entire purpose of what I, of what I do. The irony is some people feel threatened by the idea that enlightenment is possible, that there could be someone else out there that might have a superior perspective to them. And the reason why it's ironic is because the more you get to that place of truth, the, the closer you get to that ultimate truth, the more of a servant you become. Actually, you are become a glorified servant, a force of nature, if you will, because what you are doing is trying to help others and you're trying to help others arrive at that place too. And the reason you do that is because that's just your nature. You, you realize that you're just one, your body is just one person and you're much more than your body. And you look around you and you see other people have not got that yet. And you, <laughs> you want to help, them to break out of their shells. But at the same time, you know that if you help a baby chick break out of its shell, the baby chick will die. It needs to break out of that shell on their own. That's how their muscles get built in order to survive the onslaught of the survival of the outside world. It, without building those muscles, the baby chick would die. And so the same thing is true with someone who has some degree of mastery and illumination. You also have the wisdom to realize that you can't, you, you don't want to compel anybody. You don't want to um, make people weaker. You want people to overcome struggles on their own. And through independence that you earn, that makes you stronger. And it's a paradox because while you want to help, you realize there's limits to what you can do because even if you had the power to magically make everybody enlightened, you're not, you're not really helping them, if that makes any sense. It's people have to come to those realizations on their own. So someone who wants to help can endeavor to be as much of an inspiration as possible to give people the right ideas and the right way of thinking so that they can overcome their obstacles in a more efficient manner. It's kind of like saying, okay, yes, you need to break out of the shell on your own, but if you hit it right here, there's a weak point and you can come out of the shell a little bit easier. Or maybe if you um, attack it from this angle or from this perspective, or just giving words of encouragement, like don't give up, you can do it. Don't worry, we got your back. You're not the only person out there that has had struggles and you can overcome those on your own. And 
the great thing about this is that when you have that positive, optimistic perspective, that approach to the problem, it makes everything so much easier. So in my opinion, you don't have to suffer too much during this process of breaking through that next threshold of illumination that upgrade on your on your spiritual path it can be easier and how it becomes easier is by removing your self-limiting beliefs and and believing in yourself and believing that you are unlimited and not only believing that, but trying to believe that and maintain that with every breath. Whether you're at work, whether you're on the toilet, whether you are in bed, whether you are with your friends, whether you are talking with your enemies, whether you are at school, whether you're in a cinema watching a movie. It's like every situation you have the power to overcome and be who you want to be that there is within you a greater you an inspired you one mistake i feel that is made in developmental psychology and freudian psychology is they talk about needing to relive your past traumas and that is one aspect that i i disagree with there's two ways that you can overcome trauma. Yes, you can overcome trauma by going into it deeply and reliving those experiences. But when you relive something, you're keeping that experience also more or less fresh in your mind. And you don't want these traumatic experiences to be what defines you. You want to be something more than that. And so instead of reliving past traumas and history and memories that are painful for you, isn't it wiser to replace those bad memories with something more amazing, more powerful? So the point I'm trying to make here is I, as an example, in my daily life, how much time do I spend remembering painful memories? Zero. Absolutely zero. I see no value in reliving failure, re-experiencing past pain, re-experiencing heartbreak. And at the same time, I don't feel like I am any weaker because I don't experience these past pains. In fact, my heart feels more open than it ever has in its life. And it feels healed. So the point here I'm trying to make is you can heal your heart without reliving your past trauma by simply being stubborn about having a positive attitude, about being stubborn about loving, about being stubborn living your truth, and going out there and having a good time. Follow your, your passions. Follow what interests you. Follow your heart. Do what you feel inspired to do. And when I say passions, I don't mean it in a, in a negative context. There's a difference between being passionate about a hobby that you enjoy or a musical instrument or art or writing and, or making videos or travel. These are all activities that you can feel passionate about. But there's a difference between that and straight up worldly desire, which means you know, letting your desires take over you, that can be disempowering when you feel, you know, you can create addictions for yourself. If you feel an identity that you cannot be complete without something. 
ideally you want to feel complete without any material thing that gives you power because that way you can still enjoy the world but not be of the world not like the world owns you when you have desire in your life and you have that attachment and you and you don't feel peace without getting that attachment then that's a weakness you can't be powerful if you feel so attached so that's what the old saying means be in the world but not of the world you own the world don't let the world own you and how you can let the world own you is by letting your desires take over because then the world has some power over you through the desires whereas when you are loving and inspired now you there's a separation between you and the external and it's you imposing your assertiveness on the world and not the world imposing itself upon you so you are becoming the dynamic force and that's how this becomes a playground how your life can be something enjoyable that work ceases to become the the be the burden that it was before that you can rise above the adversity holding you back that you can find that place within you that is strong that is resilient and so the other point to make about this is by not identifying with the part of you that has the traumatic experiences but instead identifying with someone who is more powerful than those traumatic experiences and those weak weaker parts those weaker the, the memories of your life where you were weak instead of identifying with that weak person inside of you you find the strong person inside of you to identify with so in other words when you feel angry you can say to yourself yes i feel angry but the anger is not me i am more than that or when you feel doubt you can say okay yes i'm experiencing doubt right now but that feeling of doubt that's not me that's not the real me or let's say you feel afraid and you try to be conscious of that and say hey i know i feel afraid right now but that fear that fear is not me i am more than that so every single thing anxiety if you feel anxiety about anything you can acknowledge and accept that anxiety and say yes i know i feel this anxiety but that anxiety is not me i am more than that i'm stronger than that that kind of stubborn attitude is what separates winners from losers it separates champions from those that have never been a champion and you may not identify yourself as being a winner right now you may not identify yourself as being a champion maybe you think you are a loser maybe that's your belief right now but the message to you if you're listening to this is you don't have to choose that path there's another path that you can choose but it's a voluntary one it can't be compelled upon you it can't be forced upon you you have to choose it and yeah it takes courage it takes courage to change it takes courage to believe that you are better than the old you that there's a deeper you that's superior in every way If there's a part of you that is not confident know that inside of you there is confidence in fact any characteristic of someone's character that you can recognize in somebody else 
you cannot recognize those characteristics if those characteristics don't already exist in you. And maybe those characteristics are buried, but you can recognize them in others. So that means they're there. They're there. You just need to awaken it. You just need to acknowledge it. Look for it. Dive deep. Grab it. Hold on to it. Cherish it. Identify with that. Don't identify with pain. Don't identify with trauma. Don't identify yourself with weakness. I mean, you can. You know, nothing's stopping you. No one's compelling you to be strong. No one's compelling you to overcome your adversity. You can surrender to it. You can become a puppet. You can become just another member of the group think and, and help prop up other people's uh, group think with your agreement. Or you can decide, you know what? It's time for a new chapter in my life. Time for a new beginning. It's time to be reborn, to be like the Phoenix emerging from the ashes and rising triumphantly with splendor and grace. You can do that. In fact, that is you. Do you want that secret hidden deeper you to remain buried? Or do you want to breathe fresh life into it? And yet, and let this deeper you consume your identity to reclaim your destiny, to reclaim what's rightfully yours and not be held back by oppressors, those that tell you that you're weak, those that tell you that you can't, that things are beyond your control, that you should just accept your fate and be disempowered and just all you can do is cope. Do you just want to be a coper all your life? Just someone who copes? You don't have to. You don't. Because you can welcome yourself and be welcomed into the ultimate playground. But you know what? In order to arrive at the ultimate playground, you need to make a stand for yourself first. You need to recognize that you're worthy of it. You can do it. And so once you are in the ultimate playground, it's such a beautiful place to be. Every morning, being able to wake up to a new experience of bliss and love, to regard every moment as a celebration of life. Can you imagine yourself in that such a place where you don't have any worries? You don't have financial worries to worry about. Even if you do have financial worries and debt, which a lot of people do. Most, maybe most people do. Certainly the United States government isn't, hasn't set a very good example of what being debt free is about. But the point is, is that even if you are in debt, don't even give that the power over you. It's a mindset. You can be stronger than that. You can identify with the part of you that's going to overcome the future you. Because each moment with each breath, that is a form of wealth. That is something money can't buy. People say health is wealth. More than that, life is wealth. You have something that money cannot buy. Money cannot buy your life. It's something so sacred and so precious, but we're running out of time. This has been Atma Boda and welcome to the next chapter of your life.